Good morning, friends, and welcome to Daily Devotions by Pastor Nwaru. Let us start our day with blessings from above. Join the pastor as he speaks to us. Good morning, friends. Welcome to our morning nugget. My name is Michael Rugube Nwaru. What a pleasure is mine to have you around, friends. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray that today you may impress in our minds to make the right decisions and choices that will lead us to the destiny that you have in mind for us. Thank you for all the privileges and opportunities for today. Blessings for today. What a lovely God you are. May you spend this day with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Daniel chapter 12, verse is 9 and 10, is where our nugget for this morning is going to come from. And friends, I am going to be reading from the New King James Version, and this is exactly what it says. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand. End of court. And as usual, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I must admit, friends, that sharing the nugget um, of today uh, comes with a lot of an emotional heaviness on my heart. And I'd like you to appreciate where I am coming from. Can can you imagine beginning together as a family, maybe father, mother, and children, and you proceed all the way into eternity, uh, 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 all the way to the end of the world. And when you get where these destinies come into play, and then you become eternally separated, it's not going to be a joyous moment not by any measure. Can you imagine starting the journey of life belonging to the same faith, belonging to the same church, singing in the same choir, maybe fasting together, attending church together. You move on right through life, but at the end, when destinies are coming into play, then you see church members, that some church members um, are going in, a, in the right direction and others are going on the left direction. And that forever and ever and ever, there is not going to be any meeting again. So life is very important. How we choose To spend our life today, friends, is very important. So, Because the point is, whatever we are doing today decides what is going to happen tomorrow. So if you choose to be careless about where your destiny is going to be, if we choose not to care about where your destiny is going to be, Oh, yes, today, it may appear like, oh, no, this thing of religion is nothing, is a waste of time, it's done by people that are backward, people that are are not trendy and what have you. But the fashionable ones are secular, you know, they eat anything, they drink anything, they do whatever it is. There are no limitations, there are no rules to life, and you are enjoying your life to the fullest because for you, Life is just about today and very little consideration about tomorrow. But have you ever imagined that you have no control over what happened to this planet? Every day 
the planet is taking us somewhere. And every year is taking us to somewhere. And every decade and every century is taking us to somewhere. You can't stop the planet from going there. And you can't stop the plan that God has. But the only plan that you've got control over is whether you want to be a part of God's future or you do not want. That God will not take away from you. That power of choice and power of decision rests with you. And this is why uh, it matters a great deal how my family makes decisions, my wife makes decisions, how I make decisions. Because the decisions we are making today, the way we are approaching life today, may have everything to do with, shall we be together in eternity or we shall be eternally separated? Friends, I want you to get this right. <clears throat> when you pull out thoughts, major thoughts from this particular passage I have read, the first thing that I seem to see is, Daniel is told, you have prophesied, but your prophecies relate to the people living in the last days. So even if they are not understood by your, by your generation, it's okay. But we have actually, in your book, in your prophecy, we have pointed it to the people who are going to live in the last days. So it is, as it were, sealed and closed because it may not be understood by the people of your generation. But in the future, we are going to have a revelation where the, the hidden mysteries of prophecy are going to be laid bare to the understanding of everyone, including kids. Everyone is going to understand those who want to understand will understand, and those who don't want to understand will not understand. So basically now we get to a point where Daniel is told that there's going to be a time of the end. Friends, whether you like it or you don't, and it's not given up to you to decide, God is ending the human civilization. And when I'm talking of human civilization, ending human civilization, I'm not talking of ending human life. I'm talking of ending human systems of doing business, of running economies, human systems of doing politics, all these things that are creating poverty, degradation, and the pain. This current order of doing things this current life we are leading today that does not get us out of misery and the pain, but we continue to divorce, to die, and to have diseases and to have degradation on a daily basis. The good news in this passage is all that is coming to an end. And God is going to create a new planet as we discussed in the book of Revelation. God is going to usher in a new planet which is made new. And in that planet which is made new, do you realize from this passage that many, many shall find themselves in there? If you think you don't want to go there, and if you don't want to go there, and if you think like nobody has an interest to go there, Friends, this passage is having some shocking, shocking revelation to you and to me. There will be many people sharing eternity with God. And I am told, and one thought that I like in this passage is that, oh my goodness, and this is powerful, is that those people who have this understanding of issues, understanding of prophecy, we have this desire to share eternity with God. The circumstances that we are going through, the challenges that we are going through, are going to be a purifying agent where they prepare themselves for the coming of the Lord. It matters what they eat, how they dress. It matters what they think. It matters how their lives are ordered. 
they go through some reformation, they go through some revival, they will actually bring their minds Godward. God will smile at those and you will give them the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not their own righteousness, but the righteousness of that. This is where we are told they will be purified and made white and refined. And exactly what does that mean? The righteousness of Christ will become their righteousness because nobody will make it into heaven on the basis of their character and on the basis of their own goodness. We all are going to be there on the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ. But of course, we know that the righteousness of Christ also works on our character, on our minds, so that we are in tune with how God thinks and how God feels. I would like to welcome you to this kind of life where people understand this world is not going to be there forever. Where people understand this world is going to end one day. And the way people understand there's going to be a judgment one day, God is going to judge us. And the way people appreciate the fact that I need to work my salvation with fear and trembling and the Holy Spirit helping me, I'll be ready for the second coming of Christ because, friends, Jesus Christ is going to come again. You better be ready. You better be prepared because he is coming again. So this calls for understanding. You know, you are not in heaven by mistake. You are not in heaven by default. It takes your mental engagement to be able to pay attention to what the Bible says, to what God says, so that you are prepared for your next destiny in life. But I want to also say the sad part is that you have those where the Bible says the wicked shall do wickedly and not stop. And none of the wicked shall understand. The idea is not that it's very difficult. It's not that it's difficult to understand God and to understand the prophecies and to understand the signs that this world is coming to an end. No. Wickedness, yes, I just a spirit of I don't want to hear anything about God. I don't want to hear anything about the Bible. I want, don't want to hear anything about church. Please leave my life alone. That is nonsensical. I'm okay by myself. And, though, and therefore, the idea of not understanding is deliberate. It's not an absence of knowledge or difficulty in understanding knowledge. But it is simply an attitude of I don't want God to leave me alone. You can keep your prophecies to yourself. You can keep these things to yourself. I am okay without God. And therefore, when you make such a decision, there can only be one direction. And that is, we are going to lose you forever and ever and ever. But friends, that time has not yet come. You can repent. You can change your attitude and seek after knowledge and God. The Bible says the Holy Spirit in John chapter uh, uh, um, 16 verse 18, He will guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit is ready to guide those that want to know, those that want to understand, those that need a revelation. For the Bible says God will not do anything unless He has revealed His mysteries to His prophets. And you find this in Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Friends, as we live in the last days like now, the future is clear before us. The situation in the world, these pandemics, all these earthquakes, tsunamis, and all these, these things that are happening today, we've been told in the Bible that we are going to pass through a phase that is so difficult to human life we will not know what to do and Christ coming will be the only hope left. And therefore, friends, I, I wish, uh, how I wish God can open your brain, reconfigure it so that you may understand the issues from God's perspective. I feel sorry also for people who may be going to church 
who are involved in church and not necessarily in spirituality that is life-saving. It's not enough to go to church. It's not enough just to be a church member. There are some people who are holding on to defiance, who are holding on to disobeying God deliberately, knowingly, living a life that defies righteousness and holiness, who do not care what happens for as long as they are going to church and for as long as they are listening to sermons. Salvation is not just about listening to sermons and to our popular preachers. Salvation is about obeying Jesus, taking Jesus as your master, ordering your life according to Christ in what you call Christ-likeness and God-likeness. Heaven is not for churchgoers. You may be popular in going to church, but if you are not popular in obeying God, we may live to see each other today, but when the future comes, we may be parted eternally in spite of the fact that we attended the same church. But the choice is now to do the right thing. Let us pray. Father, I pray for this friend of mine. Help them to make a decision and a choice to end wickedness and to do righteousness and to accept Christ as the commander and the Lord and the master of their lives. I want to thank you, Lord, because I think by faith this friend of mine will be humble enough to be led by the Holy Spirit into all the truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, a day that starts with God is always a blessed day, no matter the outcome. Join us daily as we share with one another the good news from God. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get more devotionals like this. May God bless you.